Name <coughs> Turret. <coughs> Don't know what that means. Okay, F4. Let's try the... Uh, <coughs> this is Bird's opening and this is some counter gambit. Hmm, never seen D4 before. So, seems like I should take something. Yeah, pawn or the D pawn, huh? Let's take the D pawn. If I'm giving up a center pawn, <coughs> I want to get a center pawn for it. Okay, so he gets his queen developed. Uh, maybe I should play D4 and clamp down on the move. D5 and clamp down on the move E4. <coughs> yeah, so he's got a nice hole here for me. Nice for me. And he's not going to be pinning this knight anytime soon. So maybe bishop d6 and pawn to uh, c5. <clears throat> I could play pawn to c5 immediately too, I suppose. But I don't think that is going away. The from gambit, that's what it's called. The bird opening and the from gambit when you play e5 to f4. <coughs> Okay, he's lining up on my king side. Knight and bishop could coordinate on uh, onto h7 there. Let's yeah, let's gain a tempo on the queen and <clears throat> develop the knight and not castle immediately. Queen only has one square. No, the queen could go here with check, or it could go here. Two squares to choose from. Okay, chose queen c3, staying on this diagonal maybe. So let's uh, develop the knight. <coughs> With the queen check, I would just develop the knight anyway, so. It's just a matter of where white uh, wants his uh, queen, although I just saw a funny move now. Uh, okay, it goes away. If he hadn't castled, I could have played uh, c4 and bishop to b4 with the knight supporting the bishop pinning. Pinning the queen, <clears throat> but that doesn't work now. So I still play c4 and bishop b4. c4 and um, the bishop has to retreat. There's only one square. And then bishop to uh, b4. This diagonal is out for the queen. This diagonal is out for the queen. So the queen <coughs> can only go right or left or up and down. Up and down is blocked by pawns right and left. It's covered by the pawn and the bishop, so that's actually trapping the queen. Yeah, so if he plays bishop to um, e2, I believe, I calculated this to be a queen trap. This might be a short game. Yeah, see the pawn covers all these squares on this row, and between the pawn and the bishop, up and down is covered. This diagonal is covered by the bishop, and this diagonal is covered by the knight. So the best he can do is give up his queen for a piece. So I guess that means uh, <coughs> queen to a5 would have been a better place for the queen. Okay, he's going to play on. Um, I will go ahead and uh, play on as well. <coughs> yeah, white really does not have a lot to play for. He can open up the F file. I just, uh, the thing to do is to be cautious and not get caught in a skewer of some kind. Yeah, like a rook here, skewering the king and the queen. Just get your forces out. You got you got more forces than the other guy. Just just get them out like you would in a normal game, <coughs> and uh, trade things off when you can. If it doesn't leave you at a disadvantage, maybe bishop to uh, d3, threatening to check here. 
d6, bishop d6 threatening the check on uh, h2. Not a mate, is it? King can escape via f2. So maybe just bishop to g5. Yeah, so he covered it, so I don't, uh, I don't get to take there. And um, as other pieces are not yet in the game, the bishop could come here to g6 to cover this uh, file if necessary. And. And hitting the queen. And uh, the dark squared bishop is still behind his pawns here, so I can't easily come out and harass my uh, queen. But uh, now his rook is a target. Yeah, I should just take his rook, right? Where's the knight going? Nowhere special. <coughs> you can trade it for the bishop. So just maybe rook to um, e5. Rook e5. Uh, but, you know, I can't go anywhere from there. <clears throat> it would be nice to get something on f2. So I could attack h2. Uh, let's go here with the queen. Get the queen out of the way of the f-pawn. Attacking g3, incidentally. And then push um, f5. To uh, open up this file, <clears throat> you can't actually take because uh, queen takes g2 is checkmate. So yeah, it's tough, tough to play. So if you count the pieces, one, two, three, four, yeah, each side has four pieces, but I have a rook for a bishop and a queen for a rook, or, yeah, something like that, queen for a, a minor piece. So yeah, I wanted to open the f-file. Check. And, ah, he gets a fork, yeah, let's see. Should not be enough to <coughs> change the course of the game, but uh, shows why you have to be alert all the time. Okay, so now it's just a queen against a bishop. <clears throat> so I should make use of the greater mobility of the queen, open up some lines, and the queen can come around and scoop up some loose pawns here, maybe. And uh, <clears throat> also start to make some threats against the king over here. Let's uh, bring the king out to attack that bishop. <clears throat> okay, now he's going to try and check the king with uh, bishop to h4, so I'm playing this so check. I can play g5. 
not have to move my king. <clears throat> Just want to get my king to some relatively safe square where I can um, scoop up a few pawns and then uh, march one of these home, maybe. White resigns. Yeah, yeah, it was not going to be an easy game to win. So I'm going to upload this, uh, even though it was kind of a short short games over and about move nine but uh it, it shows some some ideas of how to how to think tactically i thought um so i'll do a post-mortem too and uh, see you guys later bye